fun to do bad things and drive into a car. What's up guys welcome back to the channel today uh, i want to answer your uh all your questions about the gs 300 manual swap um so everything you know going into it uh, i had a lot of questions myself and so i'm hoping to answer all those questions if you guys had similar questions that i do uh hopefully ease your mind about doing the swap and just jumping right into it so uh yeah let's get into it all right so first things first is what transmission did i use i went with a w58 from a old celica supra so my transmission came out of a 1984 1985 celica supra um th those were like the first generations of w58s um you know, and then the next generation is probably like the mk3 w58 but um i they're pretty much identical according to the internet um, very small differences. Um, I think like the center plates made out of aluminum uh, Not any weaker than a W55 because the IS300 came with the W55 and if that came in a W55 The GS300 should be fine since it's the same 2J motor But the W58 ideally should be a little bit stronger and that's what I went with and uh, Also, the swap is pretty much direct bolt-on um, There's no adapter plates you need or anything. It's a similar swap of it's a similar swap if you're doing an IS300 or anything else. I did it because that was um, my comfortability with the transmission. It's super easy. I know that trans really well. And uh, I had it laying around. Um, I actually had the trans before I had the car, which led me to buying the car. So that's the transmission I went with. All right, so next question is what cross member did I use? So uh, when I finished the swap, what I used was a stock cross member. So you could use your stock cross member and um, the stock W58 transmission mount won't work. So if you're familiar with the Celicus or if you're familiar with the W58s, um, there's different variations. Um, there's like three or four different variations in terms of how they mount. There is an older style mount, which came in like the M MK3s and the Celica Supras. It has two holes right next to each other and a little bit wider. So that's the, um, the transmission part, but the base, the four bolt that bolts to the cross member is smaller. So it won't fit on any uh, cross member like the GS300 cross member. It'll only fit on old Celica cross members or something like that. And so um, what I had to do was buy a newer style, um, I had to buy a newer style transmission mount like from a SC300. And uh, I was only able to mount two bolts to the transmission, but the four bolts all lined up on the GS300 and then uh, that mount mounted to the car. So um, OEM does work. So I, I use the OEM SC300 transmission mount and a OEM, the OEM GS300 cross member and everything bolted up fine. It was just a matter of, there was only two bolts holding it in. And it probably would be okay because my IS300 is like that and it runs, it drives, I drift it like that and it had no issues. But I just swapped this to a excessive um, cross member to a, um, I guess a conversion mount. So it's an older style W58 to a newer style cross member with a yellow bushing. So it's the softer bushings that excessive offers and the car feels so much responsive. Shifting feels nice, like I can get in gear is really solid. And I can feel the responsiveness of the transmission and I really like it. So. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I recommend going that route if you have the extra money. It was like 280 bucks for the cross member and the transmission mount. So what starter did I use? Um, the starter that I used is pretty simple. I use a stock uh, automatic GS300 starter. Uh, it's the same. The starter between the auto and the manual transmissions are, are exactly the same. So um, yeah, there's pretty much no reason to change it out for anything else. It bolts up fine. The car starts, no issues. Um, yeah, don't got to worry about that. So next question is how far did I have to extend the shifter? So I had the homie Nico extend the shifter about three inches. So if I had to, um, if I used the stock Celica Supra shifter, that would have put it in like one, two, three, right here. It will come out this hole. So what I would have done was if I used that transmission or transmission, if I use that shifter housing that I would have to get a new shifter where that comes out and bends this way and comes up. Not a big deal. But what I did was I had 
the homie shift the extender housing and then now that comes out perfectly in this hole so this is three inches you can see it comes out perfectly centered in uh this area a lot of people will say four inches four inches will come out perfectly centered right here and if you do four inches uh, a lot of people do four inches um he lightning speed shop does sell like a conversion shift boot where it turns this front part into a cubby and makes this perfectly square um, but it's up to you this one fills in the whole area makes it perfectly even which is why i went with the three inch extension and you can see it's in the gear real nice no issues well it kind of hits right here i need to trim some more but other than that it still goes into gear see all right so um another question is i got will the car still pass smog um if you're in california new york or any of the smog legal states um the short answer is no but there is ways to make it so um i have right here this is called an automatic emulator basically It's called the ATEMU Automatic Emulator. And what this does, it splices into your ECU and basically it tricks the car thinking that it's manual. And so this will get rid of the car being in limp mode. The car, you know, doesn't have VVTI. So what I did right now is I jumped the neutral safety switch so the car thinks it's in park all the time. But because, you know, there's no more transmission, the car is tripping out that there's no nothing to shift. So it disables VBTI and right now um, I have, it just feels slower. So what you have to do is install one of these. Um, you know, another way is if you have a 2001 or newer. So with these cars, these GS, there, um, there's two models. There's a 98 to 2000 and there's 2001 and up. Uh, if you do pre 2000, the ECU is different. Um, it's the same as a 2001 IS300. So um, if you are installing a automatic emulator, you take note of that. So um, yeah, I haven't seen a video on a 1999 GS300, so I'll make a video for you guys on that. But um, just to let you know, I'll be following a 2001 wiring diagram because the diagram is identical. But yeah, that's the only way to get your power back and to turn off the... Um, Check in your lights and also you need these resistors. You can see these gold things right there. So you need to wire those resistors into a couple of the plugs in the ECU, tricks the car and all your check engine lights should be gone and it should run like a automatic car. All right, next question is um, the exhaust hanger. This is something I specifically had. I haven't seen anybody ask this question, but when you are swapping um, to a manual transmission, if you notice on the automatic transmission, there is like an L bracket that mounts from the transmission to the Y pipe on the exhaust. And with the new transmission, it doesn't have that um, because my bell housing was um, not OEM. Actually, I don't know if it's OEM or not, but it didn't have uh, the bracket to bolt up to the Y pipe. And so, there is literally nothing hanging from the Y pipe all the way to almost near the end of the exhaust. And uh, everything's held up fine. Um, there's no vibration or anything, but um, it does bother me a little bit. But so far, it's been good. Nothing is like falling off yet. I haven't drove this car long, but um, I was told on the internet that you don't really need it. But I think for safety reasons later down the line, I'll probably have a hanger bolt like made. So, so I'll probably have a hanger so that way, uh, you know, something is supported there because there's literally no hangers for miles under the car between the headers and to the back of the car. All right, last question is what clutch setup did I use? Um, I use Heat Lightning Speed Shop. I have a video on how to install it and I'll show you the pedal setup right now. And the reason I went with that setup is because it is a direct bolt in. Um, there's nothing you need to cut. You don't want to drill through the firewall and there's literally no room for a, a clutch pedal if you try to drill your own master cylinder. Uh, let me show you the engine bay. But that is the reason why I went with the heat lining speed shop. It directly, it, this is why I went with the heat lining speed shop. It fits directly into underneath the car. It uses existing bolts and um, it's remote reservoir. So you don't got to drill anything. The reservoir is in the engine bay and the, the mass cylinder is inside the car. So I think it's a unique setup that works good and you don't got to deal with cutting stuff. All right, so uh, those are the big questions I had going into the swap. And um, hopefully I answered uh, some of your questions. If you guys have more questions about it, 
uh, feel free to hit me up uh, on my Instagram at Cornelius V. And uh, if you haven't already, just make sure you watch the how-to videos because I do go pretty in-depth, um, pretty much step-by-step -step from installing the clutch, the transmission, taking out the transmission, um, not taking out the transmission, but um, putting a new transmission in and all that stuff and how to fit the shifter and what I did to get everything right. So make sure you watch that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and a lot of content coming for this car, for the IS300. Um, but this car is pretty much at the end of its face because it's supposed to be a daily, but I do got plans for it. But thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.